the latest tech. People love iPhone, and it's an important part of our daily lives. Interviews. We see far too many products that come on the market that you look at that you say, was a blind person ever even consulted for something like this? Accessibility. The most interesting thing over the last couple of years is the emphasis on gaming uh, and accessibility. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome to another edition of Double Tap TV, an episode that we call Ask Us Anything. Anything. Oh, I love how dramatic that that sound is. I am Mark Flalo, and as always, joined by Stephen Scott. Yes, hello, I am that man, Stephen Scott. Uh, and this week, Mark, we have a special guest co-host, uh, not Sean Priest, who normally t- turns up and joins us for our Ask Us Anything sessions, but today it is, in fact, Becky Zarr. Now, you'll know Becky, of course, from her Raising Kindness podcast, which is available on all good podcast platforms and on YouTube as well. Uh, she's also the host of the Blind Reality podcast, which, again, you can find where you get your podcasts. Becky Zarr, great to have you here with us on Double Tap TV today. Hi, guys. Becky, thank you so much for being with us this week. I, I need to explain what's going on here because this show's a little bit different from the norm, okay? Yes, please do. Uh, so people who have, who have not seen an episode like this before, we see we put the call out on social media and like a great audience that you are, you responded in droves. So we're going to be featuring and more importantly, answering the burning tech questions that our audience has sent in from home. Exactly, Mark. And for Becky's sake, I have to let you know, this can get a little bit hectic. Now, you know, here on Double Tap, that is not a huge surprise. Uh, But we have got a lot of questions to squeeze in. Are you up for the challenge, Becky? Well, it's always fun hanging out with you guys. So yeah, uh, let's give us a whirl. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, let's get things going, guys. We're going to dive right in and we're going to start with a tweet that was sent to us at Double Tap on air from someone by the name of Andy Brown. Andy writes, has anyone noticed dictation on the iPhone inserting lots of commas into messages lately? Is it possible to turn this off? Stephen, is it? Oh, now that's a great one. Yes, now you can adjust punctuation when it comes to Siri because, of course, we're talking here about Siri. Uh, That is doing the dictation work here and actually uh, entering the text. Yes, you can adjust that in settings under Siri settings, but, of course, there's lots of other punctuation settings available in there as well if you're using VoiceOver uh, in order to navigate around and change what input uh, the uh, you know the text is actually putting in there, but yes, you're right. A lot of commas do appear. Becky, are you uh, noticing that as well? Yes, I'm so glad this question was brought forward. I thought it was just me, and I feel ridiculous. So I'm gonna look into Siri settings. So thank you for that question. <laughs> Don't forget about keyboard shortcuts, too, because if there are common phrases that you use over and over again, like your address, or your email address, you can actually create shortcuts. So you can put like just a couple letters and the second you hit space, it actually fills that in for you. So that might be a way around it if those commas are appearing in things that you use more often. That's a great point, because that is a feature you'll find under keyboard settings, and it's called text replacement. Really worth checking out, because like you say, Mark, you can just put in a couple of letters, and that could be something like, I do it all the time with my Uber. So what I do is I will, if I'm using an Uber, I'll have one that says, hi, I'm the guy with the, the dark glasses on and the white cane, and I'm looking a bit goofish, usually the Uber driver instantly finds me. I don't know how that's possible, but there you go. <laughs> you see, Becky, this is not too difficult. Okay, here's a question that I think, Becky, you might actually be able to help with. It comes from an email from David Clemens. He writes, Hi, Double Tappers. I watched the episode with Becky the other day, and she mentioned her air fryer controlled by her voice. She wants to know what model is that. I haven't been able to find it reliably anywhere. And where did she get it? You see, Becky, this one's specifically for you. Thank you, David, for including me. Okay, so I don't have the model number memorized off the top of my head, but it is a Kasori brand smart air fryer. And I got mine off of the good old friend Amazon. Um, But I will say that keep an eye on the Amazon prices because I've noticed that it varies because I bought it as a gift for other people as well. Um, Anywhere from $300 all the way down to about 165 bucks. And I got mine for the lower amount. It's fabulous, I promise. How does it actually work? in terms of the voice control is it tied to your amazon echo is it voice controlled by itself how does that actually work yeah it's to my smart device the lady a and um my tech guy my 13 year old son has set it all up for me so don't ask me the ask me the ins and outs on it but i promise you it works fabulous with it you just say you know hey whatever her name is um turn the air fryer on at 350 degrees for 10 minutes and it's like air frying for 350 degrees for 10 minutes it's great i promise now steven i'm sure you're saying yourself at home like a air 
fry, why would I want to make make fried food healthy? Exactly, that's right. Well, I suppose it's the closest I'll ever get to healthy, right? But, you know, again, the one thing I would find, and I have found this, is that there are cheaper options out there that can really work for you. And oftentimes you'll find these usually have two knobs on them, one for the timer and one for the heat. And you can get those marked up with, you know, perhaps using bump-ons, or some kind of tactile marking. But of course, the great thing here, Becky, is people are saving money by using these devices. Totally. And ours does have buttons on it. I've added um, some bumpets on it as well. Um, but honestly, I'm too lazy to hit the button when I can just use my voice. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay, Becky, Stephen, now that we've got the hang of things, I, I want to take a quick break because when we come back, we've got another question that I think Becky will just absolutely love. This is an Ask Us Anything edition of Double Tap TV. Of course, if you want to get involved, the email address feedback at doubletaponair.com. And, you know, plenty of ways to get in touch with us. We'll tell you now. You're watching Double Tap TV. Get involved. Follow us at Double Tap On Air or email us. Feedback at DoubleTapOnAir.com. Double Tap TV will be right back. You're watching Double Tap TV. Back on an Ask Us Anything edition of Double Tap TV, Stephen Scott, Mark Aflalo, and our guest host this week is Becky Zarr. Now, Stephen, you said she was sitting in for Sean. She's not really sitting in for Sean. You know, Becky kind of stands on her own, I think. Yes, absolutely. I think, Becky, you stand tall. Oh, obviously, you're sitting down, but you stand tall generally in this environment. <laughs> Well, thank you. How are you feeling so far, Becky? Good? Oh, this is fun. I Like I said, it's always a fun time with you guys. So, um, so far, so good. Okay. Okay, what's next, Mark? I've got an email lined up here from Leon Gilbert, and he writes, I recently got an Apple Watch, and unlike on my phone, if I send a message with Siri, I don't get the chance to correct it first. On the phone, I could say read it back before sending, which gives me a chance to check it. On watchOS, it just says, I'll send this. Is this resolvable? Thanks in advance. That's a good question. Stephen, you want to take this one? There is a way round it, Mark, which is kind of an alternative way of doing this. Instead of using Siri to dictate a reply to the message, the best option is actually to go into the Messages app and reply from there. Because at that point, you can then dictate your message, check it, and then send it. That's the, the longer way around. But to do it with Siri, unfortunately, no. It doesn't give you the option. That's not something you can change. But like I say, there is that workaround. And there's also a real, a real cool feature actually, which I think is in the watch settings on the phone, where you can actually choose to have a transcript of what you've said as well. So you can actually send a text version of your dictated message or the voice message. And you know, Siri's actually pretty good at the dictation sometimes. Becky, do you use an Apple Watch at all? <laughs> No, I feel really bad. I feel like I'm late to the game and I have nothing to no, contribute okay. to this. But no, I don't have an Apple Watch. So, I mean, I've thought about it, but I haven't actually plunged into that, that environment yet. Becky, here's another one I think might be right up your alley, and it's actually referencing the episode you were on last month. Here, here we go. I heard an episode where you mentioned a water level sensor. How does that work? Am I behind the times? Where can I get one? Can you demonstrate? That comes from Eleanor. So so, so what do you think? Do you, how do you use them? Like, where do you get them? Okay, Eleanor, I love it. Okay, so it's called the liquid level indicator. This is the girl here. It's in my right hand. It's about, uh, I don't know, I'd say two inches high by an inch wide, um, by an inch deep, maybe. It's, it's fairly small and compact. It's got these little hooks on the back. Um, and I got this one actually off of the Braille Superstore. Um, I don't know if it's still a thing. I just got it a couple of years ago and I actually went to go on to Amazon to order another quick one the other day to have a delay because I order off Amazon all the time and it was outrageous. I would not recommend unless you can do a better search than I can um, to source it off there because it was like 50 bucks and I paid I think six dollars for this puppy. This is such a cool piece of tech and it's actually it's almost like the entry level when it comes to tech but it's equally as important as the iPhone in some ways, you know, because when you're making a hot cup of tea or coffee, you ideally don't want to be sticking your finger in there, especially like me if you're a Braille reader, right? You don't want to be sticking your fingers in a hot cup. It's not going to do your fingers any good. So having the ability to use something like this, and I love the way it's built in the way that you have that initial beep and then the secondary. Some people use it differently. So for example, you if you're making tea, you would pour the water up to the point where you get that, that sort of fairly uh, you know, short beep. And then they add the milk up to the point oh, where you get those faster okay. beeps. And that's, you know, a way to make a cup of tea so you know where the milk level is. So, you know, it's just little things people can do to, you know, navigate their lives and, and do things like make a cup of tea independently and safely. Totally. And look, you just taught me something as well. Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's a show. It's an educational program. 
I've got a fun email here from Adrian, uh, who sent an email to feedback at doubletaponair.com. What is the most valuable piece of assistive technology that you can't live without? Ooh, I like this one. Becky, ladies first. Okay, so there's a long list of tech pieces that I think are super valuable, but the one I want to share with you guys is I think it's a little bit understated in its value because it just doesn't get to be talked about quite enough. And what it is, it is a voice talking meat thermometer. Um, I use this baby all the time. I have had food poisoning in the past and it's not the thing that you want to give to somebody or receive back yourself. When I lost my sight, cooking meat made me terrified and people have taught me the different touches to your palm and whatever else and that's great for them. But for me, I want reassurance of an actual digit, a number. So all you do is you stick the end in like you would a normal thermometer, hit the button, it's not going to be an obscure temperature. There's my ambient temperature, obviously, but it tells you um, what your temperature is definitively. That's my piece of tech. I love it. I feel like Stephen's list is going to be way longer than that. Do you know, it is, but <laughs> and I could list a lot of things, but I, I'd like to simplify it by saying iPhone. There, I said it. I think I called bingo. Um, <laughs> because honestly, that is it for me, that ultimately everything, I mean, I think we can all say that. Every blind person you speak to, if you have this conversation, will probably say smartphone. They may not say iPhone, which of course would be a shame, but if they do say uh, smartphone, it will probably likely be the iPhone. Uh, I think second to me, um, and more recently, is the Victor Reader Stream. I really love this device because, and for people who don't know what it is, ultimately it's a device that allows you to put your talking books, your notes, your text documents on, and everything's read back to you in audio. Uh, it's a portable device, similar size to a smartphone, uh, it is internet connected, so it can download podcasts, it can listen to internet radio streams, all that stuff. It's also controlled entirely by a good old fashioned physical button T9 keypad, but it's one of those devices that I think you realize when you have one and if you use it, you know, the benefits of having something external to the smartphone, because, you know, the battery doesn't last forever. And if you're traveling, you really want to have a bit of comfort knowing that you've got your smartphone there, charged up, ready to go for your, your GPS and your communication needs. But if you're wanting to enjoy and relax and with some entertainment, you don't want endless calendar notifications or messages from Marco Flalo or, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> you want to turn all that off and just chill out and listen to a good book or, you know, listen to a good podcast. Like Double Tap, which is available on all podcast platforms everywhere. <laughs> Shameless self-promotion. OK, uh, Becky, Stephen, we're going to take a quick break. We come back, maybe some rapid fire questions on this. Ask us anything edition of Double Tap TV. We'll be right back. Can't get enough Double Tap TV? Subscribe to the podcast and get your fill of Double Tap every day. Visit DoubleTapOnAir.com and follow us now. Double Tap TV will be right back. You're watching Double Tap TV. Hey guys, welcome back to Double Tap TV. Today it's all about Ask Us Anything, your questions to us, and Mark has another. I do, from Mary Pierre, who writes us from Trois-Rivières, which is actually quite near me. And this isn't uh, really tech-related, but let's go with it, okay? Do you have any tips on picking out what clothes to wear. Okay, now there's a reason I actually chose this question because I think there's a tech angle here. Stephen, tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, well, yes, thankfully there is. I'm uh, okay. loving that you came to me first in this question. Of course. Um, I am the man to ask because I only wear two shirts, as you know. Uh, but look, for those who are interested in, you know, knowing a bit more about the clothes they're wearing or, you know, even perusing a fashion magazine, uh, oftentimes that can be something which a blind person would even consider. Well, with a new partnership between Be My Eyes and OpenAI, Be My Eyes being an app, of course, that connects blind people to sighted volunteers, and OpenAI, a company that have taken artificial intelligence quite frankly to the next level using this new chat GPT product which at the moment is being used in lots of different ways but its latest upgrade which is part of this partnership allows for images to be searched essentially so you can query an image uh, uh, maybe it's better if we actually show you how this works in action Be My Eyes released a video featuring Lucy Edwards she's a YouTuber she's a TikToker and she's the face of Pantene as well and she's totally blind and she demonstrates here how she is able to navigate a magazine uh, with pictures in it uh, with various dresses and all kinds of stuff she's able to get detail about all of that using this fantastic new feature called virtual volunteer which be my eyes and open ai have worked together to create 
Watch this. I'm blind and I found this Chanel catwalk book. As you guys know, I am obsessed with fashion and makeup. So I want to know what's inside this and I'm going to get Be My Eyes AI virtual volunteer to tell me what's inside the pages. Let's see if it can do it. I'm going to open it to a random page. Add picture, button. I'm going to take a few. Take picture, add picture. Then maybe take here. Picture. Take picture, write question here, dictate. What is the model wearing on this page? Ask question, virtual volunteer. Hi there, in the first image, there are three models wearing a white dress, a black and silver outfit, and a black and orange outfit. In the second image, there are also three models. Would you like me to describe any of the outfits in more detail? Ooh, yes I would. Reply. Yes, the first outfit in more detail. Ask question, virtual volunteer. Sure, the first outfit in the first image appears to be a white dress with a high neckline and long sleeves. It has a layered skirt with a scalloped hem and is accessorized with a long pearl necklace and earrings. Is there anything else you would like me to describe in more detail? I'm crying. Oh my god, I've always dreamed of like buying books like this. Of course, that video, Lucy Edwards, uh, courtesy of our friends over at Be My Eyes. We should really get them on the show, Stephen, uh, you know, sooner than later to talk about how they're using AI in that new develop new, new version of the app. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's an incredible piece of work that they're doing over there, and it's something that I want to investigate more. But, you know, there are other ways to do this, and a lot of people use various marking tools around the home. Now, some people use Braille labelers. There is a fantastic scanning uh, system called the Pen Friend, which looks exactly like a, a big jumbo pen. Uh, and you have these little stickers that you can stick inside clothing. You can sew them inside clothing. There's even buttons you can attach to the front of your fridge if you wanted to, you know, little magnetic buttons. There's lots of different things you can do for marking up products around the home and clothing as well. Uh, that's one option for some people. I mean, for me, it's quite simple. It's shirt without stains, shirt with stains. Uh, and that's how I label them up what about you becky i imagine you're a bit more organized than i am in the wardrobe department it's all about organization for me um i i do like having you know more than two t-shirts to wear i like switching it up so for me it's organized Show off. it's organized by season um as well as um i guess what the actual item is so i have open shelves in my room and i have a stack of long sleeve shirts and then next to that i have long sleeve sweaters and then next to that i have of my hoodies and then above that i have my pants like all according to like leggings a stack of them and then a stack of jeans okay we get it you're organized we get it okay fine <laughs> yeah it's really important mark <laughs> yeah that's my tip okay organize organize and then reorganize yeah. uh let, let's do some rapid fire here because we've got a, a question here from greg who says you mentioned an application on the pc during one of your podcasts lately that helps you know if you're centered on the screen. Is there one for the Mac? Stephen, I'm guessing that refers to you. Oh, well, what a great time for that question to come up because yes, you are talking, of course, about the Can You See Me app. More recently, though, a new application has emerged called Centered Head, which does exactly the same on the Mac. You can just open up this application and it will tell you by either voice or by a series of beeps whether you're center on frame. And then you can, of course, use that information when you go onto your Zoom or Teams call. It doesn't overlay, it doesn't, doesn't build into any application. You can have it sitting separately from your Zoom or Teams call and you can check any camera, even an external camera, even your iPhone camera if you use the Mac with continuity camera that a lot of people do nowadays. You can even check if you're centered on that. One important tip though, just remember and make sure that the camera selected in the meeting is the one you're checking. If you've got an external camera connected to your laptop, say, and your laptop lid is shut, then if you think you're looking at the external camera and the camera is actually that's selected is the one that's in the laptop, then you're going to find that they'll just see a blank screen. So just be aware of the settings. Um, but it's a great application. Centered head costs a dollar. It's nothing to download. I love that, Becky. I think that's something that you could probably take advantage of now. 100%. Like that is a fabulous, very applicable um, app. And I look forward to it. Next question comes to us from Jordan. What's the difference between all those Bluetooth number pads and how are they? I honestly don't even know what number pads he's referring to. I guess for those people, Stephen, who have keyboards without the numpad, you can get a Bluetooth one. Yeah, and of course, a lot of people nowadays, when you buy a laptop especially, they tend not to have number pads unless you buy those larger 15 or even 17-inch laptops. You don't often get the numpads anymore. Yes, you can buy external because a lot of people like that. They like to have it. And for those of us who use screen readers, if you use the Mac, you know, there's great ways to use the numpad commander feature. So it allows you to control the entire system with a numpad. On the PC, of course, it's the same with JAWS and with NVDA. There are ways you can control the system 
just by using the numpad. But of course, if you don't have a numpad, that can be a problem. So there are a couple of options out there and two I would recommend. One is Microsoft's own pad. That's what it's called, simple as that, just Microsoft pad, which also has some customization in it as well. An accessible app you can download, which can let you customize some of the buttons that aren't the num one, numbers one to nine. If you want just plain number pad and you just want to use it as exactly as intended as a number pad, then Satechi, S-A-T-E-C-H-I. Satechi is a great company. They produce lots of different products, mainly for the Mac, but of course this works across platform and this could work on your Windows computer. And it's just a very small, uh, neat little, very thin uh, number pad that can just slide into your laptop bag when you're on the move. Love it. Uh, we're out of time. Becky, did you survive? I'm still here. <laughs> I don't know how you know how helpful I was, but it was a blast as always. I love hanging out with you guys. <laughs> well, brilliant. Thanks. It's not about being helpful. It's just about being part of the conversation. And we enjoyed having you as always. Uh, remind our audience where they can find you and listen to some of the great stuff that you are putting out. Yeah, you can check out my um, Raising Kindness with Becky Zara podcast on YouTube, or you can listen to an audio version on any major podcast platform. Or if you feel like checking out my uh, previous podcast called The Blind Reality, you can also find it on any major podcast platform. Amazing. Stephen, any final any final parting words for everybody there? No, just keep sending your questions. Keep them coming to us. Feedback at doubletaponair.com. Please keep your feedback coming because we love doing these and we will do more. If you keep sending us questions, we promise we will do more of these episodes. We just don't promise we have the accurate answers. Uh, thank you for being here on this Ask Us <laughs> Anything edition of Double Tap TV. We'll catch you again next week. Thanks for watching Double Tap. Send us your feedback to feedback at doubletaponair.com. Leave us a voicemail at 1-877-803-4567. Hosted by Marco Flalo in Montreal and Stephen Scott in Glasgow. Producer Marco Flalo. Editing and graphics Jordan Steves. Voiceover Anna Vicino. Social media Wendy Kaufman. Integrated described video specialist M. Williams. Supervising producer Michelle Dudas. Manager programming AMI-TV Lizanne Gagné. Director content development and production. Kara Nye. VP Content Development and Operations John Melville. President and CEO David Arrington. Copyright 2023 Accessible Media Inc. An AMI original production.